Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, we're going to talk about today about um, integration and Azure-based integration um, with Project, but across the uh, Microsoft um, technology stack. Um, we're going to do a demo today. We're going to show um, integration with Project Online and Power BI with ServiceNow for incident management and JIRA for agile-based um, development, um, which is a pretty common configuration that we see. And we'll talk about you know the methods and hows of, of how to actually do go about implementing um, you know some some considerations, and we'll talk about the importance of business rules and things of that sort. Um, so thank you for attending today. Um, just want to say today is the third episode of our Art of the Possible webinar series. Um, this is a six-part series that focuses on you know key challenges faced within the PPM and Microsoft stack. Um, you know within that stack, I mean there's there's definitely a lot of Time, the challenge that many companies have is that you know they, they see these opportunities, but then the question becomes you know how do I go about taking advantage of it? How do I adopt from it? Um, so this talks about you know what the challenges are and 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 methods for implementing it. Um, next and then starting next month we've got a couple additional ones we're going to focus on um, trend analysis and snapshots. Um, the, the webinar number five will focus on um, license maximization. Um, one of the challenges we see frequently is companies um, <clears throat> invest in licenses and they're, they're not taking maximum advantage of those licenses. And then the final episode will focus on um, control around processes. How do we put um, workflows and things of that sort into place that will allow people to um, go ahead and, and manage their own process so that you know um, um, standards are in fact enforced. So thank you very much for attending today, but today's going to be um, focusing with BIA, BI Advantage, um, which is going to be the core for many of the other future work um, webinars. Um, other webinars that we've done in the past, if you go to the quantumpm.com webinar um, site, there's a whole series of other webinars that, that we've done in the past. Um, the bottom ones focus on PPM best practices, um, healthcare specific webinars. We've got other ones that are focused on financial services webinars. So um, if there's area of interest that you have, um, there's there's probably material out there. Also, always as, as always, please reach out. You can reach out to me, I'm John Single, or you can reach out to Lori Dawkins, um, who's our marketing director, and you know we can definitely speak with you and, and talk about any of these subjects in in detail. Who are we? Uh, we are um, Quantum PM. We are a gold Microsoft partner um, specializing. We've been around since um, 2000. We focus on you know portfolio project management based solutions, um, enterprise integration using um, Microsoft Cloud and Azure based technology. Uh, we've got our BI Advantage tool, which is an Azure based integration hub, which is going to be the focus of today's session, um, which allows you to pull different data from a lot of different sources, um, you know, limited only by APIs. Um, other act, other capabilities within our organization is um, you know PPM expertise, um, ability to support um, best practice business processes to enable and drive the technology. So we can help you out with pretty much anything around the Microsoft product stack. Um, areas of expertise within PPM: um, demand management, resource management, um, workflow management. Uh, reporting, those are typically the common pain points you see within a PPM implementation area. Um, in terms of areas like business intelligence and integration, those are our, some of our major strong suits. I mean, we've done technical integrations for several of the largest accounts that um, Microsoft ha has in their ecosystem. Um, so we'll talk about, you know, we'll talk about some of those opportunities as we progress. Um, let's talk about um, you know the opportunity of integration and, and PPM in general. Um, one of the challenges that many companies have is that you know they're not taking advantage or maximizing the utility of their PPM function. Um, here's a, on the right here. There's a slide that you know the PMI Institute came up with that talked about you know wh how much of an opportunity do we think um, PPM excellence can provide um, in terms of like you know do the projects right, which is about excellence and delivery. You know, there's about 62% of companies feel their goals are being met. On the y-axis, you've got the numbers of companies that you know have alignment between projects and strategy, about 43%. Um, so you can see here, there's a tremendous potential here for organizations to improve their functionality, and and that's really critical because you know doing the right stuff, shall we say? I mean, that is alignment between strategy and investment, um, and making sure you can do that, but also doing projects right, which is around um, ensuring that you know projects are being delivered correctly. You've got dashboards and reports, and I think today's webinar focusing on integration, um, that's going to be you know, a key input into these um, individual solutions. 
Um, another piece of information, Forrester did a report that was released in March of 2018 talking about the ROI around uh, you know, enterprise p project online investment. And I use the word enterprise pretty important, pretty um, definitely on purpose because you know the whole idea is that you know if you've got a an a enterprise capability that allows you to be scalable across a company and and, and take advantage of some of the um, capabilities within the tool um, common savings around um, you know project managers can work on the right stuff um, overtime costs which has to do with really having visibility into what resources are working on and getting the visibility that they do um, introduction into ERP solutions, really they talk about procurement, which is strategic sourcing, which gives you visibility into what's being used and what's being consumed. Um, reduction in infrastructure costs, great thing about cloud, um, you know, there's low cost associated with entry. In terms of um, CapEx type of, um, costs associated with in investments in IT infrastructure, that's reduced. So there's, there's tremendous benefit and opportunity here. So let's talk about integration. Um, one, of the, one of the tools that Quantum PM has that offers and, and sells um, and, and implements is this concept of called BI Advantage, which is, a, you know, I would call it an Azure-based integration hub that really pulls data from a lot of different sources, um, allows it to be um, within a SQL database within Azure, it allows it to be manipulated, um, allows snapshots to occur, so you can do trend analysis, it allows versioning of data and manipulation of data. Um, and the thing that's great about this is, you know, the limitation that you've got within this ecosystem is really the availability of, of what we call APIs. Um, you know, if a system can provide the data, we can pull it together. Now, what opportunity does that present to an organization? Is you know, rather than a typical point-to-point -point type interface interfacing solution, that really allows you to develop an enterprise view of how systems relate to one another, what systems, what governance, and what what capabilities are, are provided by each system within the within the application landscape um, allows you to develop enterprise um, solutions that can that can you know span the entire technology suite and this is really important because you know you see trends right now about you know IT being used as a driver for um, you know, driving business and being an, an enabler of business strategy. I mean, what this does is it allows you to, you know, pull together data from lots of different places, aggregate it, and actually allow technology to aggregate its capabilities and, and be aligned very much with the business strategy. Um, the other thing that's great about something like a BI Advantage is if, in, in terms of initiatives like, you know, IoT, where you've got and um, customer experience, for example, and you've got all these tremendous sources of data that are coming in. All this can be mashed together um, and, you know, and, and taken and, um, analyzed and understanding what kind of, you know, really allows you to get insights into data in general. Uh, one of the things we do quite a bit of is what we call, um, you know, data by discovery. It's really focused on looking at data and see what it can say. And, and, and I do a lot of client, a lot of, um, I work with a lot of customers who, you know, are challenged by this notion that I've got a lot of data, but not a lot of knowledge. And this can really give you insights into it. Um, the way BI Advantage is constructed is it's, you know, it sits in Azure. Um, it's a software as a service type offering. It's rules based. So we talked about developing governance and business rules for how systems talk to each other, what is done where, what data is passed back and forth. And then we've got a series of you know modules, which are all configurable connectors that can be developed and, and configured for the particular solution that you have. And we're going to look at some of that today. We're going to you know, talk about integration opportunities, mechanisms for actually achieving um, enterprise integration, and then we'll do, do a demo for ServiceNow and for Jira integration with um, Project Online. Here are some of the connectors that we have. Um, you know, some of the cloud integration with BI Advantage, uh, and the thing is, these are all pre-built, but they're all modifiable. Um, so you've got you know integration with CRM. Um, um, integration with SharePoint, Project Online, Business. There's a bunch of series of other ones that are out there. Um, and some of the benefits of this are, you know, reduced number of integration points, um, easier reconciliations, um, faster, more consistent management, um, centralized data. Um, for example, like timesheet rationalization is an area that we do quite well. We've, we've got some very several large accounts where we're doing that. Um, we're using that as an opportunity to take to consolidate information from timesheets and push it off to an ERP package for cost management perspective. Point-to-point, uh, -point, the typical point-to-point -point interconnections, those are all, you know, just kind of a hodgepodge. And, and I think this graphic here kind of gives you some idea. If it's all, you know, this talks to this, this talks to that, this talks to that, this talks to that. It doesn't allow you to develop this whole ecosystem 
based solution. And that's the that's the difference here is because it becomes more of a because rather than being like a you know integrated view of an entire enterprise, it becomes you know and you know it depends upon the specifics of this talks to that, that talks to this, and that it becomes in terms of in terms of optimizing the value that could be derived and delivered from a landscape perspective. It, it creates op types of opportunities and challenges with it. Um, another advantage of, of BIA um, is enter once use everywhere. I mean, which is I think is important because you know there's lots of different sources for where data can come from um, and brought into the BIA solution. I mean, some of the classic examples that we use if, if, is you know Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, um, 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 Power BI reports. Um, a lot of times we put this embedded panel technology that can be used um, within Project Online so that specific data entries can be made. Um, you can have situations where you've got data that can be associated with um, CRM, for example. Uh, we've also built front ends using SAP's Open UI 5 Fiori components that can be used to drive a more um, user-friendly interface um, as an inbound into um, a, a Project Online. In some cases, if we, I mean, we've done these where you can drive ideation, for example, using Open, open UI as, a, as, a, as an input into a um, project online suite because it's a very user-friendly type thing. Um, and it's really what this does is it drives the whole single source of truth and, 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 and allows you to have you know, data integrity and referential integrity across the ecosystem. Um, other capabilities between, um, between another capability within um, BI Advantage is the whole passive versus active approaches. Um, you can have a situation where you can create mail notifications, monitor folders, um, put, if, if somebody puts it in the incorrect place, they snag it and then they can say, okay, well, you know, we'll have somebody else fix it. Um, becomes very much of a passive type thing where the user is not necessarily involved. And I think the, the, when we talk about passes versus active, it's who has to fix it. If it's an active base, that's where the person entering the data, um, you know, they have the um, opportunity to go back and make a fix associated with it. Um, if you're using, you know, things like active, it comes with embedded add-ins add-ons that can be used for um, core technologies, for example, timesheet entry. If you're entering too many hours, you can have a notification that says, oh, by the way, this is too high. Um, if you've got save actions which are prohibited or violate business policy, uh, you can have notifications that pop up and say um, not to do that. Um, you can use add-ins to auto-select the correct location. I mean, if you've got a situation based on a geography, you know, you can have an active search that allow you to, um, to take advantage of that. What this does in general from a business perspective is it allows you to decide on you know essentially process controls and automation I mean it depends how rigid you want to do it um, you know my experience has been from best practices perspective this is you know the opportunity to try to have as few controls as possible and build them in later um, and I think that's a theme here that's gonna have to that we should also mention is that you know organizations need to build maturity as they're building integration because a lot of times they don't understand the business rules they don't understand the integrations that they have they don't understand the data that they have and they need to have the opportunity um, to pull this stuff together um, so, I mean, as organizations build maturity, the, the solution and the business rules can evolve as well. All right, let's talk about this. This is, um, um, and we're going to talk about this for part of the demo, but this is what I would call a, a classic example of a system of record architecture. <clears throat> and um, a system of record architecture, what this does is really allow the best practices of different applications to be captured in a way that they can do what they do best. It eliminates redundancy of data entry and it allows, you know, different things to focus on different applications, but from an overall landscape perspective, this maximizes the utility of what's being delivered and it also forces strategic alignment. Let me talk you what I'm what I'm talking about. Um, in this case we're using, you know, Project Online as the repository for intake processing and ideation. So for example, an idea is generated, you're in a, you're in a company which is focused very much on let's come up and generate new ideas. Um, you know, let's score these and let's consider, you know, candidate projects as we move them from like a early phase to a later phase and there's, you know, multiple stages in the approval process. Then it would go into the portfolio management piece, which would include ideas coming in, but also recommendations coming down from senior leadership and executives. Um, so you've got you know people coming in, um, you know senior leaders and executives coming in with different proposals for projects. You know, and what Project Online can do is it can help you determine what projects are included in the portfolio and which are actually worked on. 
and which are not being worked on. And you know, th this this whole portfolio management capability with con with consistent scoring of projects and value, I did, where you got specific, we've got consistent value drivers, consistent scoring, consistent um, mechanisms for um, you know ratings for each one of these. You know, this is something that this is a core capability that can reside within Project Online. Something like project management, I mean, the goal about project management, this gives you insight into how projects are progressing. And you can use enterprise reporting through like Power BI to, to get that insight into as we manage the process as it progresses. Now, again, depending upon the landscape, you might decide, well, the project management task may have, you know, higher degrees of internal pro project management with occurring within Project Online and more of it occurring within third-party applications. Um, a classic example of that is, you know, wh what you're trying to do in the project management is really understand how much work is being done from a project management perspective. So, for example, if you're an agile shop, you know, you, there are agile capabilities within, pro within Project Online, which is certainly true. Um, you might also integrate with an application like Jira, um, which is a very strong in the in the agile space, you know, here you might just have information on sprints. So, for example, if 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 you decide that, you know, the Jira base, the, the backlog and and the um, retrospectives and and the user stories, all of that are going to reside within Jira, and you just want to maintain status information. You can use um, BI Advantage to maintain that connection. So, you know, you've got you understand what the the sprint is in progress, who's working on it, what the start and the end date is. And then, you know, you might just have, and you might just increase or decrease the level of integration as you progress. Again, this is a, this is a marathon, not a, not a sprint here because part of them I use there, but um, it's all about, you know, the initial integration may focus just on start end dates and um, resource assignments, but, um, you know, you might increase the level of integration as you progress. But, you know, what this would have is what is, what work is being progressed on, who's assigned to it. You might also want to have project management by waterfall based approach, which could reside within project online. So the the agile stuff would be here, the waterfall based stuff would be here, you know, and that, and that would be part of the, you know, system of record architecture that would need to be figured out. Um, other opportunities, other inputs of demand, so to speak, might be ServiceNow. I mean, you, ServiceNow does an excellent job at incident management. Um, depending upon the type of incident, you know, if it's, it's one of these how do we do things, well, then there's no work associated with it. The incident's routed to um, call center based functionality or a call center based solution. Um, you might also have a situation here where there, there could be an actual incident associated with it. So you'd actually trigger the, you'd have BI Advantage create a task within Project Online. Again, this is where all the work is managed. So you would understand, you'd have this waterfall-based demand. You'd have the Jira-based demand for agile sprints. You'd have incidents that would come in here. And this would be the home for, you know, all the work management side of it. And then there's other opportunities where if you want to, you know, bring in things like Office 365 Planner, for example, is another Microsoft technology that, you know, is, is very much focused on work. So you could integrate that in here. So that this could be the, you know, repository of all the work that's being done. There's other opportunities with BI Advantage is, is you know, understanding, for example, you might want to do continuous build. So if you're using um, TFS um, for Transaction Foundation Server, if you're using that for code management, if you're using Maven or Jenkins for continuous build, you just need to align this with the project, with the um, business rules that are being used within project management. Um, other app, other ideas, other places of integration, SAP ERP. I mean, again, from a best practices perspective, don't try to make applications do things they're not intended to do. <clears throat> SAP is very good at financial management. Okay, so if you need an FI solution, use an ERP, use SAP or Oracle. If you want to do IT financial management, Aptio, they do a great job. Um, and it integrates well with SAP, it integrates well, um, you know, with a project online based solution. If you want to do incident management, you service now, okay, and you can integrate that with your project online solution. If you're doing agile, you could do it within project, um, or you could use Jira, or you can use TFS. Um, there's other options out there, but you know, make sure that the the application focused on agile development is in fact that, and, and the architecture would be designed to capture and and collect and and, and use the capabilities that um, that are best and and innate to each one of these applications. The final thing to think about here is with BIA being the integration hub for all these different applications, you know, the, the rules that you would develop, the business rule development, I can't overstate this enough, you know, that would be what data is residing in which systems, how it's going to pass between different systems, and the idea would just try to get this entire ecosystem to work together um, in harmony. And, and again, this whole concept of um, continuous build and gaining maturity, this is going to evolve. Um, and when we talk about integration solutions and possible ways of doing this, 
the initial release, for example, might just be you know not all that complicated, and you might add capability as you build organizational maturity. Because change management and having an organization that can absorb this type of change is pretty important as well. So you need to bring everything up at the same as you develop the ability to utilize and take advantage of it. Um, best practice here, BIA, with all the data being aggregated in one place, integrated with Project Online. If you use Power BI's reporting, you can get enterprise level reporting. So you can see all the things that are going on in all these different applications, build dashboards that gives you visibility to this entire ecosystem. Um, and this is really, you know, in terms of the ability of technology to deliver value to organizations, this is absolutely seminal to being able to do that. Um, instead of seeing, a, you know, a hodgepodge of different apps doing different things, you got this huge picture that's working together collaboratively. You got a roadmap for launching new capabilities. Um, so this is, you know, this is the end state. And I think, you know, usually what I like to do at the beginning of one of these integration efforts is try to lay out a roadmap that says, okay, you know, maybe for day one, we'll do this, maybe for, you know, we'll, we'll add functionality as we go, but really try to have some idea what the end state vision would be uh, moving forward. Um, here, here's, here's, um, you know, what I, I like, I don't know, I, I don't know what the term is for this one, but, you know, what this can describe is, you know, some of the opportunities that you'd have from a BIA integration um, thing. And I don't know any other application that can bring this much data together and this, these many applications. And, you know, the, the things you can do with this, theoretically, I mean, you've got the opportunity to talk about project management, you know, it could be, you know, anything within Office 365, SharePoint, Project Online, Tableau for reporting. Um, you can use um, Power BI for reporting. Um, Avante service now for IT service management. You know, I've got other things like Epic if you're in the healthcare business. You've got Archer for uh, risk management, um, talent management for Talio, Concur for expenses, ADP for payroll. You know, ERP packages could be Lawson, Oracle, SAP, work management, Asana. Um, you know, that's a popular one. And then you could use Planner that could be used for the work management side. Um, code development, <clears throat> TFES, Jira, Maven, Jenkins, uh, Nexus, CA, Visual Studio. I mean, the, 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 really the world is your oyster here in terms of how you bring things together. So at the beginning of one of these things, you really need to you know, have that, spend that period of time to say, okay, what is my vision? What am I trying to do strategically from an organizational perspective? How am I trying to deliver a capability to the company and then try to align the technologies to work there? Okay, now we talked about the opportunity, but let's talk about the how. Um, and I think this is pretty important because, I mean, what this really does is it's it's important that, you know, like I was saying earlier, some key themes here, it's around gaining maturity. Not Organizations can't take all this change at one time. So you need to build out a, 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 the ability for organizations to build the maturity, have training in place, add capabilities, but also this idea of, um, you know, retrospectives. What did we do wrong last time? What do we want to fix from our existing process? And building that into um, into our solutions. And I think from a retrospective perspective, that's a key aspect of, of building organizational um, excellence. And I think a lot of the, 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 my, the suggested how is based on a lot of its agile-based um, functionality. Um, and the other thing is in terms of focusing on integrations, think about pain points, think about st key strategic priorities. But usually from an approach perspective, you know, how do we do this from an Azure-based integration? You know, let's drive adoption, keep the risk down, and how do we optimize? And really, the, the, essentially, essentially three phases here. I would call this like, you know, POC, initial capability, and then agile-based enhancement and refinement. And let's talk about what each one of these would be. Um, phase one, which would be a POC, um, usually would focus on, you know, let's get the technology in place. That that would be let's bring in BI Advantage. Let's get the Azure-based integration hub worked out. Let's identify the connectors that we're, we're going to use um, for the solution. Um, architecture vision. That's what I was saying at the beginning of this. You need to figure out what the picture is going to look like. What am I trying to hook together? What is the you know what what you need to do is is essentially develop this picture. You know, what system is going to do what, <clears throat> what's the, you know, ownership of data, who's going to own what, you know, what the layers of integration would be, and then, you know, the business rules associated with this eventual, eventual vision. Um, again, the theme we were saying earlier is this is not something you're going to know at the beginning. Um, it's going to be evolutionary. But developing that vision at the beginning of what, what you, how you think this is going to hang together, how it's going to support the business, how it's aligned with, with corporate strategy, that's all critical here. Business rule development, that's around understanding 
what the governance and the rules would be for the solution as it's as it's in place. Um, and again, this can evolve. I mean, there might be increased levels of integration as you progress um, the capability. Um, best practice is start small, build, add add integration. Um, don't start off with a lot of complex integration because you know it can stop the it can stop the process as it's going. Um, you've also got situations where um, you, you know if it becomes too rigid and too tight. Um, it's going to the people are going to be turned off by it. So so things like adoption and change management become much more difficult as you progress. Um, so for the first one, you've got this you know technology. What's the vision for it? And then for an initial deployment, usually this can start off small and it's it's a relatively small bite. And what this idea would be is let's get BIA in place, integrate a couple applications, some some very simple business rules um, initially for using the connectors, but those can be enhanced as we progress, which would give people, and let's build some reports around it. Um, so it will give us an opportunity to really focus on, you know, a couple pain points, a couple key strategic areas, um, and then use that as to, to, again, get the organization familiar with, you know, what the capabilities and opportunities are. Um, I like to have like a, you know, a set of, you know, super users within an organization who understand and, and really learn the solution and, and take that as an opportunity to, you know, build capability as we progress. So you'd have a POC period. Um, usually this would be, you know, 30 days, 60 days, something like that. And then, you know, you'd have the adoption, get the organizational maturity, and then you'd want to figure out, you know, what would be the initial integration. Again, so what you'd have is you'd have your architecture vision from the beginning of this. You might have a couple updates to it. Um, probably not. I try not to if we can at this point. Um, business rule development for what this initial integration would look like, and then configure, test, and deploy. Um, so this would be, you know, what are the first primary integrations that you'd want to achieve? What would be some of the primary reports and dashboards that you would need to achieve? What, how is that aligned with the vision that you've got? Um, and 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 from there, and then we would go ahead and and, and implement that. And then at that point, I would call it the enhancement and refinement, which is step three and beyond. And this is where we get to agile and things of that sort. This whole idea of a retrospective. Um, I can't say it again. It's like just because we've built an integration, it changes. Okay, as we learn and gain maturity and get some insights into how the process works, we're going to tweak stuff. We might also decide we want to add levers, levels of integration and specificity as we go, um, you know, depending upon um, what our experience is with it. Um, so that can be, you know, that, that would be something we want to take advantage of. Um, business rule development and updating, those would be for any new capabilities you're bringing in. We need to develop the business rules associated with it. Um, for the development, um, you know, these would be the connectors, this would be the business rule to support the connectors, and if there's updates to existing ones that are in flow, need to figure all that stuff out. Um, architecture vision, if there's any updates to that. And then you have configure, test, and deploy. So this would be both the connectors and the reports um, and, you know, ensuring that you've got all those pieces. And since this would be at this point, you know, above and beyond, um, you know, where this, there would be step four, five, six, and seven, but this could be sprint based. I mean, you can bring things in by application, by, um, by integration, you know, so this can be focused on, you know, using agile based principles, but at this point, you've, your organization's had maturity with it. It's gained, you know, an understanding of what the opportunity is. So there's going to be lots of ideas flowing within the company of how to leverage this type of a architecture of truth solution. Um, last thing, one of the things we want to talk about is, you know, some of the connectors that are available within uh, BIA. Uh, we've got, these are ones that we currently have, but, you know, we can build anything, pretty much any of them, but really it's, you know, PPM-based connectors. Um, that, and that's not just, not just Project Online. This can be with, like, Primavera or CA or whatever, you know, PPM you're using. Um, financials, uh, that can be Oracle. It couldn't be um, any of the Oracle-based ones. Oracle, SAP, Lawson. CRM, that can be Dynamics 365, it could be um, Salesforce. Service requests or Agile connectors, this can be with Jira, it can be with, um, it can be with um, CA Rally, it can be with any of the other ones for IT services, I mean it can be um, ServiceNow based integrations. Um, ERP and HR, that can be with any HR solutions like a PeopleSoft. Notifications, this can be um, workflow notifications that can be used for um, situations where you're trying to build process controls, for example, and automation. So what you've got is a situation where there's a business process, um, there's a notification that's coming out of it, like this one over this threshold, this didn't go over that threshold, and, and enforcing notifications that go with it. 0365 file connectors, um, this would allow you to pretty much integrate anything within the 0365 stack. 
um, audits and monitoring. This is, again, building process controls that are in place. Um, and then the whole concept of operational data stores, data dashboards and reports. Um, that's where, you know, based on the O data that's available within the Microsoft stack, we can extend O data out to capture additional information into reports. Um, I mean, this that, that's something, again, it's hard to overstate, is the advantage of having this BIA solution with um, reporting sitting on top of it and the ability to generate literally enter, eco, ecosystem slash enterprise-wide reports um, is pretty important. Importance of business rules. That's really understanding what's the, how is everything hanging together, um, what is my initial version of the of the integration, and that can evolve as we progress. Um, in terms of this, I think it's it's pretty important if you're doing like a BI Advantage software as a service versus a point to point. Supports your business process. I mean, one of the problems with the point to point is that you know each one of these point to points has their own process that they have. It's pretty rigid. Um, and the thing is, if you've got a hodgepodge of point to points, they're not all designed to work together in, as an enterprise. Um, BI can take any ABI can take any type of UA, UI, any type of user interface which makes the most sense. It's easy to adopt. Um, use, UIs are predefined. You can do trend analysis and snapshots. I mean, what's one of the great things is, I mean, you're, you're limited to point in time data without BIA, but you can do trend analysis and snapshots. That is absolutely critical for continuous improvement. Um, if you're in like um, R&D, for example, we do you know projects with R&D firms and they wanna have an understanding of, you know, is the business case still valid um, and see where we are from a performance perspective. I mean, there's all, in terms of trend analysis and snapshots, it drives any type of continuous improvement. Um, in terms of ability, um, hodgepodge of point to points do they all work together here you're limited by the API's ability to access the system data so pretty much anything that can be delivered we can build any type of picture we want to paint so the mosaic can be very you know it, it could, it's designed to hang together but it can be our picture rather than just a series of bunch of little point to points that don't hang together in one um, that hang together in one tapestry um, scalable um, you can bring additional connectors online as you go. So, I mean, a lot of times we see, you know, somebody starts out with PPM, they start out with financials. Oh, by the way, I want to bring in HR later. So, you know, you've got the ability to bring modules in and connectors in um, as you gain as you gain maturity further along. So, and you, and and the way our subscription model works, you know, it's whatever you're using is what you pay for. So, if you're not bringing in something until later on, you don't pay for it until you use it. And then the big one is enterprise reporting. Um, you've got nobody else can do this in terms of ability to, to have the whole tapestry wide reporting versus, you know, reporting in a series of different applications that, you know, may or may not be synchronized with one another. So that's the story of the BIA piece of this. So what we're going to do from a demo perspective, do we have any questions at this point, um, Allison? It's Lori and no, we have no questions right now. Okay. Feel free, if anyone has questions, to type them in the, uh, the box on the bottom of the screen. All right, so what we're going to do today for demos, we're going to show um, JIRA integration with Project Online, and we will show um, ServiceNow, how that would work. Um, and, we'll, and I'll do some demos. So let's start it off with, let's do JIRA. Does anybody care? Um, but let's pick it out. So if we go here, if I'm in my JIRA application. So my first thing I want to do is figure out from a business rules perspective, you know, what is my landscape look like? What is my degree of integration that I want to achieve? Um, so what I'm saying for purposes of my, of my governance, my business rules for JIRA integration, I'm going to have a situation where, what I'm going to show you is we're with a connector between um, the Agile connector with Project Online. Um, initially, what I'm going to do is, in terms of governance and control of Agile development, that will occur within JIRA. Um, I'm going to manage my backlog. I'm going to manage my sprints within JIRA. I'm going to manage the completion of the sprints within JIRA. Um, what information will be transmitted across to Project Online is going to be the start end dates of the sprints, um, and this is initially just this view for, for today, um, the start end dates of the sprints and the, and the resources. So what I'll have is, you know, the work is being done here, but I'll have visibility to it on the project online side. So what we've got here within JIRA is if you go, I don't know if everybody's ever used JIRA before, but what you have is you've got, you know, backlog. Oops. So I've created a project called QPM Test. I've got a backlog associated with it. I've got three sprints. I've got QPM Sprint 1, I've got Sprint 2, Sprint 3. Um, in terms of where we are 
And then I've got the backlog one. So if I want to create an issue here, I can do one called um, AOP webinar. So what I've got here is I've got all these different things that are, these are the backlogs that have, these are items in backlog that have not been assigned to a sprint. Um, I would manage all this work and this is the information that I have. So if I want to look at AOP webinar, I can add all this information, who's assigned to it, who's reporting, what's the activity, I can put comments in it, add a description of what the work item is. I mean, and all this stuff, I mean, there's really no reason to keep this or push this to project online. I'm just going to do my sprint work within, um, within JIRA. Um, the other thing you've got is you've got your backlog, you've got your planning board. Um, sprint planning board, you've got your to-dos, you've got the in-progress, and you've got dones. And you can add columns to these as you want, um, as you progress. Whoops. What is this? Oh, back to where I was, sorry. Um, you've got report items that can be associated with it. So, I mean, you've, in terms of the work that you're doing, you want to use your JIRA, the capabilities that are innate to JIRA. So I'm going to go to my backlog. And for what I've done today is I created one called Sprint 1. Um, I'm going to edit the sprint, so we'll take a look at it. You can take a look at the dates that we have. So we've got a start date of the 25th of September, end date of um, October 9th that's coming along here. These are the tasks that are associated with it. I'm building a pump. I have the option here if I want to take AOP Webinar 2, move that up here. Boom, I can add that to the sprint. Oh, maybe I can't. Can I not? Oh, but you know why I can't? Because it's already started. Okay, so I moved it across. It confirmed it, so I've added that to the sprint. Um, so what this does is, from a governance perspective, system of record perspective, I have, in fact, you know, created all these different tasks within, and the work is being done in Agile. Now, per my governance... What I'm trying to do here is what what information if I if I want to if I want to have the capability of work management within project management, information do I need? So if I go across, but what I'd want to do here, at least at, you know, at a very you know simple level of integration with basic business rules, is just say, okay, I created the sprint, sprint one, and we understand the dates on this. Um, it's October, September 25th through October 9th. There should be a project line associated with it. So if I go up here to project online. Okay, what I've got, actually go back here, hold on. Do, do, do. I mean, the way you would do this is you would have a project type. Um, hold on. Give me a second, let's get it. Log me out here, I just get it pop back in. Okay, so if I'm in Microsoft Project Online Project Center, this is the highest level view of my projects. Um, if you go to the Project Center view, what you would have here is, um, you know, these are the different um, project types that I've got assigned that are available for me. I can do projects, I can do different project types. So for demo, what I did is I created a project type here called Scrum Project. Okay, and, and if you go to Scrum Project, this is my Agile-based ones, open it up. And guess what should be sitting here? If all did work well, hey, there it is. Good. Um, <laughs> QPM test. That was the one we created within um, within Jira. So if I go in to this project, what you'll see here is this is Sprint One. Okay. So for purposes of what information is included in Project Online, I just want to know about sprints that are in flight. So Sprint One. Let's go back here. If you'll notice, this is one that's already started. These other ones are pending. So, for example, if I want to create, I haven't started these sprints yet. This one has been started. So, the sprint one is already in flight. But if you go to Project Online, oops. Um, you'll see that this one has already been started. That's why it's visible here. So, if I go to Project Sprint test, if I go to project details for this particular integration, 
you know, QPM test. We've got QPM test sprint one. It's 10 days, starts the 25th. These are the resource names. Now, the thing that's cool about this is I don't, I don't need to know what the backlog looks like. I don't need to know what's pending for sprint two, three, and four. I just need to know what's in progress and who's assigned to it. Um, you can change the level of integration and the business rules as you evolve. So, for example, if I gain maturity that says, um, you know, I want to have visibility into, um, if I want to have visibility into like pending sprints, you can you can change that information and enhance the business rules. And that's what I was saying. As organizations build maturity, you know, the business rules can evolve and and can develop as you progress. The other thing that's kind of cool about this is <clears throat> Microsoft Project Power BI has a series of reports that are associated with different vendors. So for example, you know, if I go in and if I go to Microsoft services, you know, Microsoft Power BI, um, they've got a series of reports, you know, that different vendors have. And it just so happens we've got one for Jira. So these are all free. You don't have to pay for them. Um, they come with the PBI um, subscription. So, you know, there's one here for Jira. It's in here because I just downloaded it. I'll show it to you. Uh, so if I go in here for Jira, well, oh, believe me, if you go over here, I, I just downloaded this already. So I hooked this up with the with the Jira instance that we've got here. Click on this. I've got a report, a standard report for Jira. You know, this shows me these are the ones I just created. So I've got the build the pump, the design the pump, enhance the pump, reporting for hump. So all the different report inf incidents that I've created for it. So there's a standard report that are that's already been. Let me refresh the data in this just to make sure everything's good. So I mean, there's Power BI reports that can be um, that can be they're already available that come out of the box. So you know, we talk about the enterprise wide reporting. There's also ones you can do specifically to the applications. A lot of these have already been developed by vendors using the Power BI application. Um, so that's that I mean that's one layer of integration that we've got here. So the other one we could talk about is let's talk about ServiceNow. I mean we talked about you know does anybody have any questions on Jira before we're done? No questions. Okay. Let's talk about ServiceNow. I mean if in our in our universe that we've got here what we're talking about is um, let's let's figure out what you know what piece of capability is going to be supported in which area. So ServiceNow is really good at incident management. Okay, that's their that's their bread and butter, their forte. Um, so it's going to focus on let's manage incidents as they're created. When an incident is created, it's triaged within ServiceNow, and then it's sent out to um, Project Align if the if the work if if individual work has to be completed on it. Um, and that's where we would go ahead and and handle that particular aspect of it. So for demo today, let's look at um, our ServiceNow piece. Let me sign into this. Okay, I don't know. I don't know how familiar people are with um, ServiceNow, <laughs> but I mean the, the the main capability within ServiceNow is is IT service management. Um, IT as a service, for example, we develop service catalogs. For example, can be built out of ServiceNow. Um, so if you develop and, and this and, and companies are focused, you know, IT as a service, standardization of of services and and all the way down the stack. And the idea would be to standardize provisioning of um, IT capability to businesses. Um, so, I mean, this is pretty important. So if I got services, I mean, some of the ones I can bring a laptop, I could do Cisco Jabber. They've got all the different, you know, you got Microsoft Access. So there's lots of different um, service catalogs. So this is a, you know, representation of what a service catalog could look like. Um, you could, so what would happen is a user would cl click into this, that is a UI associated with it. You know, they can get different type of services and peripherals and hardware. Um, 
but for purposes of today, I mean, this would be a request for services through against the service catalog. And the other key capability that ServiceNow has would be incidents. So I would go ahead and create an incident that could be associated with it. Um, that, that would be something that somebody who's actually on the phone would call in or somebody make a request of, and I would do the incident management stuff. So for today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an incident. How do I do here? New incident. Caller is the system administrator. Call, then we have the description that would be um, AOP webinar. And it'll give you this to actually default some information here. You submit this thing. So we go ahead and create the incident within ServiceNow. Um, and the thing is, depending again, depending on the degree of integration that you would have would determine what business, the, the business rules would be critical. So for example, with the, the status here, you know, you'd have the open, the close, the urgency, the state. Those would all be things that would need to be addressed during um, you know, during this design phase and, and understanding of the business rules. For example, um, if I've got a situation where initially I just want to create the incident, if it's one that requires work by IT. So, I mean, for example, on the ServiceNow side here, um, if you're integrated with BIA, um, you could have a situation bidding on the type of incident. It could be very easily routed to a call to a, a help desk type thing. So, for example, if it's somebody who, you know, calls and says, well, I don't know how to use Excel. I mean, there's probably not a problem or something that would require an IT fix associated with it. It would be you'd want to talk to somebody who's an expert in Excel who could help out the user and provide the user insights into that piece of it. Um, so, you know, the, the routing and stuff, that can be controlled by BIA. and Business rules can be associated with it. Um, so that would be something you'd want to triage. But depending upon what happens, if it's something that would require IT development, and this, this would be the business rules that would have to be figured out to do that, um, you know, you go ahead and create the ticket for it. It would get pushed across, and then it would go across to the to the project online side of this. Um, so we go here. You know, this is the one that we've got for for the Jira based ones. Um, what I would do here within Project Online is similar to that. You'd have a project type associated with, oops, incidents. Let's go to the, actually let's go to the top piece project. There'd be a project type called incidents. The incident number will be reported there, and then the work will be managed within Project Online. Um, and it could actually be triaged and sent off to JIRA. It could be done within a waterfall-based approach. So there's a lot of different things you can do there. Um, and, and again, there's there's a lot of things that need to be figured out as far as the work, the business rules around integration with um, ServiceNow. But again, the, kit, the thing is, and let's go back to the slide here again, is that don't think you need to know everything at the beginning. You don't. Um, just figure out, let's get the initial integration working and then enhance it as we gain maturity and practice with the tools and say to yourself, well, gee, you know, maybe I should do this a little bit differently. Um, so, you know, this is pretty, this is pretty cool stuff. And if you go to the reports here for Power BI, um, as with JIRA, ServiceNow also has a great little report pack, content pack that's available. So if you click here, refresh my data, where's my refresh here? Bring it in. We got 30 days that are just done. I got new ones that have just been created. So all these are in our ServiceNow um, instance. So I mean, this allows you to get visibility into it using the Power BI um, stack that's associated with it. Um, and the thing is, is if you're managing the work within Project Online, since you've got these all the different sources, whether it's something that's been created within Project Online by itself, something that's coming from Jira, something that's coming from ServiceNow, you know, you've got the ability to develop enterprise reporting that goes on top of this. So if I go you know, within Power BI, I can say, I'm going to look at the ones that are, these, this is aligned with Teams, by the way. If you're using Microsoft Teams, you can have reports aligned to specific teams. And then go from there to, oops. So we go from there into um, the specific, um, you know, sample reports that could be out there. I can go take a look at these. And I can have reports and dashboards that could be used and captured for um, understanding you know, what's out there is one pro, um, programs that we have. So you can actually get a visibility into all the different programs that are out there. In this example here, I'm looking at a subset of, you know, reports that are associated with the transformation program. But I can do the same thing with PBI for um, for reports that are include incidents, things that include um, in, tickets that come in, anything that's agile based, I can traffic light it, uh, but depending upon the, you know, starts and end dates. Because even if I bring in a project and, and just have one line with the start and end date for the for the 
for example, my in my example here, even if I have a um, shoot, let's go back here. Even if I have a, a start and end date for a sprint that's coming in from like a Jira, if there's a, vi a variance from the baseline, I can still get the fact that there's a variance associated with it and then capture that within a Power BI report. So I hope this wasn't too confusing. Um, there's a lot of stuff here, but I mean, in terms of the opportunity here, you know, there's tremendous opportunity to build this overall view from an enterprise perspective. Um, and again, you know, your business rules, you don't have to know everything at the beginning. Take this evolutionary value, uh, but figure out, you know, what are the initial integrations? What do I want it to look like? And then you can add complexity as you go across. That's all. John, I yeah, we have one question, um, and uh, that was from Rod Reed. He wanted to know if um, Jira pushes tasks to the project online schedules. Yeah, exactly. You can, have, you can set up a push notification here. Um, where is it? Yes, it does push. I mean, what would happen here is, is as you create the sprints, and, and the, again, this has to do with the specifics of the business rules. Is I, I, the, the way this is configured right now, and again, this is a business rule specific. I don't have no, I don't have visibility to what tasks are being worked on within Jira within Project Online. I could do that if I wanted to, um, if you felt the information was necessary within G, within. Um, project online. But I mean, the governance that we've got for purposes of, of the business rules that we've got is we just want to know what the sprint is, what the start end date is, what the percentage, compl percentage of completion is, who's working on it so we can do enterprise resource management. But you can bring the additional data in um, if, if you have a need to do so. And those are some of the conversations we would have at, at, during one of these. Let's figure out what the initial integration would look like. Is what data do you need? Why do you need it? Um, and what, and, and from an ownership perspective, what belongs in which application? And that's why I keep saying over again: is this, this, developing these enterprise-wide architectures. It, it, it takes a lot of conversation, but you can get this whole thing, as I say, as a tapestry. You want it to be a tapestry at the end, where everything talks to each other and has their own specific roles. Any other questions? No. No other questions at this point. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming today. Um, please, you can reach out to me or Laurie Dawkins um, if you have any other questions. We'd love to talk to you guys about you know, other opportunities that are out there. Um, I mean, I'm really excited about this whole subject because there's just so much you can do with this. I um, mean, I'm just talking about, like, you know, with ServiceNow and Jira, but when you bring things like, you know, IoT and, and customer experience, I mean, you can paint this, use... This is really a powerful solution to drive, you know, enterprise excellence um, across the entire organization. Um, so thank you for attending today, and um, hopefully we'll talk to you next month. We're going to talk about um, the whole idea of trend analysis and snapshots, and guess what? That's also based on BIA. So that's another.